All right, folks. I'm Alex Aquarius. I'm back. Uh, I've already made an episode of the complete How to Make Ormus uh, procedure. Uh, that I think was a longer one. That's like 26 minutes. This is going to be a really short one. What I'm going to show you here is I just started making that last video when I showed you the Ormus and the level it had. See that one? It was a little bit lower. This could go down about another inch if I gave it another hour. But it's only been two hours since I refilled that and stirred it with my wooden spoon. And it's already been rinsed several times. It's, it's separating really fast. All right, you see that? It's separating really fast. So what I'm going to show you is what I found to use at home. When I do this in the kitchen, I get this tube, and I put it right at the level where the white cookie is, right? And I get a clothespin, and I hold it on there. And uh, once I get it in there, I take this other end of the tube, and I start it going. Well, yeah. Okay. So it's draining pretty fast. Look at that. Can you see it? Look at that water level going down. One thing you're going to find when you start making Ormus, every time you rinse it and you move a jar around, you rinse these things out, they get all briny and salty and white. Don't worry about it. It's just a uh, salty brine gets all over the glass. And uh, you want to use glass, too. You don't want uh, your pHs affecting plastics and other things you might be mixing with, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and stop this video here. Okay, folks, we're resuming our local recording. I've got my level down all the way down to the uh, cookie. All right. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to switch screens, screen, uh, screens real here real quick, and I'm gonna, I want to show you this pH meter. Uh, I don't like this anymore. I just tried to calibrate it, and I made a buffer solution, and it didn't work right, and it's not reading right. This is the brand called uh, Jealous. I've seen this same unit, same colors and everything. They private label it. There's another one called the Abenaki, A-B-A-N-A-K-I. I think the, the Anunnaki brand is a little better. But this is a Abenaki or Jealous. Uh, it's going to be cheaper, but don't waste your time. I did. I've only had this for like two months, and I'm going to go spend some more money and get one that's a little better. There's one here. Let me show you on a different screen. This one, this is made by X-Tech. If you look here, it's got a better readout. Mine only has uh, one digit to the right of the decimal. You, here's to the hundredth place to the right of the decimal. And this has the temperature of the water as well because pH is affected by temperature. So some of these readers will give you a more exact pH reading um, and compensate for temperature at the same time. And this x -Tech, I had one of these before about five years ago, and it was awesome. It, it's a really good unit. You calibrate it here. It has uh, power off on and off. Comes with buffer solutions where you can constantly uh, tune it. Uh, so that's a really good one. Now I'm going to show you the numbers. Okay, these are the uh, these are the numbers I want you to remember. <clears throat> when you're mixing your ormus, the first time you go into the batch and you put in your Dead Sea salt and you're sprinkling in, you've got your pH meter in there, and you're sprinkling in your lye, your sodium hydroxide, and you see it go up, and it starts, it'll do nothing for about the whole tablespoon. You might have to get a little more, and then suddenly just sprinkle granules in there, and then you'll see it start to go up. Watch out, because once it gets to the sweet spot, it's going to jump. So when it starts going 10.3, uh, 10.4, 10 10.5, slow down. If it hits 10.6, stop. If it goes to 10.7, that's great. You want it to be, it, it wants to get to 10.78. So once it hits 10.7, let it stop. It may touch 10.8, that's fine. You want it to bounce between 10.7, 10.8 if you don't have two digits to the right of the decimal. But if you've got that good meter, you're going to know when it's around 10.77, 10.78. That's the sweet spot. That's where you get the correct noble metals that will turn into your orbitally rearranged minerals and metals that you want going into your cytoplasm for your body to be tuned up at the right uh, frequency vibration. 
Okay, now when you rinse it, when when I do this, like I just drained off the part that I don't want and I left the cookie. This is a good part in here that we drink. Okay, now if I filled it up and stirred it and let it drop again, that's called a rinse. Okay, I've already rinsed this one batch so many times. I'm going to go ahead and taste it here. It's not salty at all. It has a very, um, almost like a, a pearly, chalky taste to it, a texture that you can feel around the roof of your mouth, your palate, your tongue. But uh, it's very pleasant. It doesn't have any salt flavor to it at all. It doesn't taste anything like the Dead Sea salt taste when you start out. And uh, this is it. That's, that's drinking the pure Ormus at the end without any water in it when you've drained off the excess water and the things that you don't want that's it so I hope you enjoyed my video on how to make Ormus and I hope all these tips help you out to where you can make it effectively and uh, have a good time doing it over and out I'm Alex Aquarius hit like and subscribe and we'll see you next time at the Play Monday